Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. Recently, we've been discussing heavenly riches, their existence, and what they're like, and a lot of it can be learned through just comparing various verses of the New Testament. This time, however, while there will be some more verses, we'll need to look at more evidence than just that, because we're addressing whether or not it's sinful to be rich here on earth. When asked this question directly, most Christians will say that the answer is no, and yet many statements have been made, both in the Bible and by officials within the church, which seem to imply the opposite. Let's take a look at the evidence related to this issue. For they that will become rich fall into temptation, and into the snare of the devil, and into many unprofitable and hurtful desires, which drown men into destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy 6, 5-10 Do not possess gold, nor silver, nor money in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, nor two coats, nor shoes, nor a staff, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Matthew 10, 9-10 Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl in your miseries, which shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be for a testimony against you, and shall eat your flesh like fire. You have stored up to yourselves wrath against the last days. James 5, 1-3 It is not from your own possessions that you are bestowing alms on the poor. You are but restoring to them what is theirs by right. For what was given to every one for the use of all, you have taken for your exclusive use. The earth belongs not to the rich, but to every one. Thus far from giving lavishly, you are but paying part of your debt. St. Ambrose Yikes! Strong evidence against those who think it can be moral to be rich, so let's get to it. This first Bible passage was written by St. Paul, who, as we've discussed in these last few episodes, is often imprecise in the things he says, and or shouldn't be taken 100% literally. Here he doesn't mean to imply that earthly or heavenly wealth will lead one to be ensnared by the devil, nor that we will have only food and clothing and need to be content with those in heaven or on earth. A man is much more than just what he eats and what he wears, and his fulfillment requires much more than just these things. Instead, St. Paul is explaining that we should be willing to accept the bare minimum in this life and not seek after greater things as long as, through those meager possessions, we can still follow the will of God in pursuit of heaven. As Pope John Paul II wrote in Centesimus Annus, It is not wrong to want to live better. What is wrong is a style of life which is presumed to be better when it is directed towards having rather than being. The purpose of our lives, their direction, should be towards perfect being with God and all that follows from that, not merely getting more things in this life. Even then, wanting and or seeking more and better things is not wrong, provided you're willing to be patient and prioritize heavenly rewards and not merely earthly possessions. This command from Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew is a special commission given to the disciples, not a general command for all Christians. It is, after all, immediately preceded by commands to cast out devils and raise the dead, and very few of us are able to do those things. In this verse, James is obviously not talking about all rich men, but either a particular group of rich men, or men in general who trust in riches. Since we know he didn't mean for this to apply to faithful Christians like Zacchaeus, we can see this in the way he immediately talks about laborers who've been cheated right in the very next verse. The quote from St. Ambrose is troubling because it gives the impression that as long as the need of the hungry exceeds our resources, we're never justified in having any possessions more than we absolutely need. However, Ambrose's quote doesn't say anything like that. In fact, there are many other factors that affect the issue of earthly wealth. One of the biggest is employment. In order for any society to generate wealth, you need to have people working to produce things. That only happens if some people are richer than others and can therefore pay those others to do work which otherwise they wouldn't think to do, but which serve some important role such as manufacturing and sewage maintenance. After all, it's one thing to cheat your employees and another to employ them honestly. Another factor is dependence. 
In the time of Jesus, there was a practice by which people were allowed to avoid supporting their needy parents by giving that money to the temple. Jesus railed against this practice, saying that it was a human invention which broke the commandment to honor father and mother, and therefore used tradition to defy God, clearly implying that the young should definitely use their money to care for their parents when they can no longer care for themselves. However, that wouldn't be possible if those same young people gave all their money away first. As with so many other things, our ability to do good for others is restricted by our limited resources. In heaven, where resources are limitless, giving won't be so difficult, nor will it be needed. But here on earth, there are always going to be limits to just how much we can give away. So, having money is not evil. Even having a lot of money can be a very good thing. Having money on earth, however, shouldn't be our end goal, because, thanks to mortality, that end goal will surely come to an end one day. Next, what about Lazarus and the rich man? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.